From KL, we took a two and a half hour flight to the town of Niri in Sarawak. From Niri, we booked ourselves with mass wings with our friends Carl, Angie, Cecilia, Stephen, Emma, Eunice, Paris Apui, and Chuan Bi on a twin otter that flew us to a little village at the bottom end of Sarawak called Long Banga. The flight took us one and a half hours with a quick stop at Marudi to pick up more passengers. Our flight with our friends from the Saban and Kenyan tribe were more than interesting. We took in the sights of the untouched greenery from above and saw a strip of brown which would be the road to some of the villages up here. The four-wheel drive journey would be a distance of approximately 210 kilometers from Miri, but would take us a good eight hours to Long Banga due to the hilly and gravel roads. Upon arriving at Long Banga Airport, we were greeted by family and friends. Signed ourselves upon arrival, and as soon as the plane took off, we walked across the runway to our waiting vehicles. Five minutes away, we arrived at the Kenya village, as we were invited for lunch where their local nasi bungkus, or what they call Big Mac, with local chicken, pork, and homegrown veg were served. Then we were given a quick tour of the long house after lunch. This is our aircon. For you to close, you just put the screen. So everything will be closed. Again, when you want to open, you can just open. This is very special. Okay? And it's done. And our window is also very unique. Done? After Cecilia's tour, we continue our journey by four-wheel drive to the Saban village, where this will be our home for the next four nights. Another quick tour of Angie's parents' long house and then we were shown to our room. As soon as we were shown to our room and dropped our bags, we headed straight to the nearby river to cool off. Little did we know that this would be our shower for the day. In the evening, we were invited to a local wedding by the lovely couple, Thomas and Anne. At the wedding, the whole village showed up, bringing their own plates and utensils, which was a surprise to us, but it's a norm and expected thing to do here. As Christmas is two days away, groups group up at a few long houses to fellowship and practice their caroling. At midnight, the temperature rapidly changed from a warm 35 degrees to a cold 20 degrees. We retired to our cozy longhouse room to a deep night sleep. The next day, we helped out with the packing of Christmas goodies for the little kids and we were treated to a big sapai wrapping session by Angie's mother. At night, we went to church with all our friends for Christmas Eve worship. 
This was lovely as it was their new church, which they got ready in time for Christmas. Since it was only midnight when we got home, we decided to fire up the firewood and have a barbecue session in the kitchen itself. After a full stomach, we blend in with the locals and Angie's father for an experience with the hunting blowpipe. On Christmas morning, the girls dress up for the day's event. Since Angie's mom makes these lovely beads to sell, we had choices in size to choose from. All the girls look gorgeous as their mother, Sonita, preps their daughters, Anna and Elizabeth. Then off we walk to the community hall to celebrate Christmas with the rest of the village folks. The car was prepared to be sent over to the neighbouring village to chauffeur their VIP to the community hall where we waited. Traditional dancers were treated to the guest and they returned it with another dance. In the village of Long Banga, they only have a micro hydro, a primary school and a simple clinic. We took an afternoon stroll back to the Kenya village longhouse to see how Cecilia's mom makes straw hats. By the way, she sells them too. And to our pleasant surprise, we were treated to a private sape and lutong playing session. God is wonderful, isn't he? Wedding day, the whole village came over early to start the preparations. Everyone had a hand in cooking and dancing. 
It was such a joyous day. While the dancing cooks were having fun outside, the rest of the village ladies sat in the longhouse to prepare and wrap the big marks for the wedding dinner. got the backdrop ready for the wedding. Soon enough, the mystery pool was up. We soon found out it was a traditional game played by the villagers for the entertainment of the bride and groom and the rest of the villagers. A tree is carved off this bark, then oil right to the top. At the top, goodies are hung or numbers placed. Then boys and girls climb the slippery trunk to the top to pluck down whatever they want for keeps.
after a quick last minute pocho pocho dance practice by the friends, it's time for the wedding to begin. Then came the lovely couple, Carl and Angie, to be the highlight of the day. Dressed traditionally in the costume, Carl looked like a local warrior and Angie looked gorgeous in her wedding costume. They were ushered in by elite warrior and sape musicians to the guests of 500 odd village people. Respect was then paid to their parents and the relatives. Then parents and relatives gave Carl priceless homemade gifts as acceptance into the family. Angie too received her share of love from her sisters. And little did we know, we were included too. And so was Stephen. Then came the part of tradition where we could not escape, the eating of pure pork fats. I thought I was fat, but no, they make sure I had my share too. Then it was time for Carl and Angie to dance for the village. And a wonderful job they did. A little bit of modern tradition was added in where the couple fed each other with their wedding cake. And then was treated by their friends to a pocho pocho dance.
Soon after, Carl gave his thank you speech and dinner was served. That's where Auntie keeps her TV. Soon it's time to leave the beautiful village of Long Banga. We got up early and prepared ourselves for the one and a half hour twin otter flight back to Miri. All our friends we made from the village were at the local airport to see us off. We, the city folks, left the kampung with an enriching experience. One that you should go through at least once in a lifetime. We shall pay our visit to Long Bangak again for sure.